Hi, I'm Joe Eager with Dow Agri Sciences. Okay, the next bug we're going to key is Mazara virigula. And this is, uh, this bug had the most interceptions on the PPQ database query that, that I received. I think there were something like 1,100 interceptions of this. It's a global pest, uh, and, and so uh, you would expect it to be fairly common in interceptions. It's also strongly attracted to light, which puts it probably into some packing houses and, and, and places where uh, materials received. The uh, first, we're going to use Ralston and McDonald 1979 to key this out. And we're going to start with the key to families of American Pentatomoidea. Uh, the first couplet, says, uh, your choices are scutellum covering most of four wings or leaving most of four wings exposed. And you can see the four wings are quite exposed on this bug. The second couplet, that takes you to couplet number two. The second couplet asks you whether the scutellum bearing a large mesial spine or vertical plate are not so armed. Okay, this is a certichord, and this is the group that has this uh, spine or elevated plate on the uh, scutellum. And you can see, uh, see this thing, very obvious, kind of a spine-like spine or thorn-like structure on the scutellum. It can be variably shaped, but it's... Uh, it's a pretty easy character to see. Obviously, the scutellum on our bug is flat. Uh, it doesn't have a spine or a vertical plate. So that takes us to couplet number three. Okay, couplet number three, your choices are metathoracic scent gland orifice near lateral margin of pleuron or orifice distant from lateral margin of pleuron. This separates the phloaids from, from other bugs. And here you can see the orifice is right here. Doesn't have much of a canal or, or, or a paratrine, but it's a, it is located very near the lateral margin of the segment. <coughs> this is actually a, a expanded plates out here, but uh, this, this thing's pretty distant from the legs and very near the lateral margin. So this is a phloaid. The other odd character with phloaids is that uh, the antennae are three segmented. And here you can see the, the one segment here, two, and three. So it's a three-segmented antenna as opposed to our bug, which has a five-segmented antenna. Couplet number four, your choices are each pair of trichobothria uh, on sternites three to seven on a large callus located mesad or ventrally away from the uh, adjacent spiracle, or trichobothria not on large callus, uh, Rarely mesad of spiracles on all, all sternites. And so again, trichobothria are pretty difficult to see, but here's a pair of trichobothria here. They're not on a callus, and they're right in line with the, with the spiracles. And so, uh, so what you have here is not a denodored, and we go to couplet five. Okay, couplet number five, your choices are pronotum extending over base of scutellum, which is a tesseratomid, or pronotum ending at base of scutellum. And this is an example of a uh, pronotum that extends over the base of the scutellum. You can see this is pretty obvious. Scutellum is peeking out down here, but it's, it goes way beyond. The base of that scutellum is probably up in here someplace. So this pronotum really covers the, the base of the scutellum. And of course, in our bug, the pronotum ends at the base of the scutellum. So it's clearly not a tesseratomid. That takes us to couplet number six. Couplet number six, uh, your first choice is tibial spines, if present, confined to apex of tibia, or tibiae uh, bearing many spines in addition to those at apex of tibia and in addition to CD. These are the kinds of spines that they're looking for here. This is a sibnid, and, uh, and you can see this, these are very stout spines, uh, pretty distinctive and, and very different from what our bug has, which are very fine CD. And here are the tibia of our bug, which, is, uh, which are quite a bit different than what we just saw. So we go on to couplet number seven. Okay, couplet number seven, your choices are sternite eight exposed in males, 
Pendergrass organs usually present in females and tarsi two segmented versus sternite eight concealed in males, Pendergrass organs absent, and females and tarsi usually three segmented. It's kind of hard to distinguish. This is an acanthus amatid here, and uh, the genital cup, this is a male. You can see the genital cup here, and here is the A sternite. This is the seventh sternite. The A sternite in this case is, is present and, and visible whereas in all other groups it's hidden. And so this is clearly an acanthus amatid. And this is an example of a female showing pendergrass organ, which is this structure here. And you can see it's uh, an impressed area, frequently with a very fine CD, uh, sometimes covering more than two segments, sometimes only covering uh, one or two segments. but. In females, there's always some sort of, well, not always, almost always some sort of impression there, uh, and that's called Pendergrass organ, and we're not sure what the function is. But, uh, but if you see this, you've, you've probably got a female acanthosomatic. Our bug has neither of those characters. And then the other character with the acanthosomatids is they do have two segmented tarsi. You can see one and two, and they're that intermediate segment that uh, we've seen for some other bugs and it's present on our, our bug uh, is not present on acanthosomatids. So what we have is a pentatomid. Okay, pentatomids, we're going to now look at the key to uh, subfamilies of American pentatomidae on page 197 of the same paper, Ralston and McDonald, 1979. First couplet, either first labial segment stout and extended well beyond buculi or four tibiae foliate. Uh, are the first labial segment little enlarged and laying between the buculi? Four tibia not dilate or foliate. And here you can see uh, this area here, this is the bucula, and the rostrum does lie in between the bucula on this bug. So uh, this is obviously not an asapine or predaceous pentatomid. It's, uh, so we go to the next character. Okay, couplet number two, metasternum produced anteriorly onto mesosternum or rarely onto prosternum. Rostrum not surpassing mesocoxy. Uh, the choice is metasternum rarely produced anteriorly onto mesosternum, rostrum then extending onto abdomen. And, re and rostrum always leach reaching at least to metacoxy. So this is the structure they're talking about here. Here's the metas metasternum is, is the, the third abdominal sternum, I mean uh, thoracic sternum, and you can see this thing has, is expanded and it's produced up onto the, to the uh, mesocoxy. Doesn't quite make it to the procoxy, but it's usually forked like this, and the rostrum lies right in, in that groove, and uh, it's rarely any longer than, than you know, the end of that groove there, so it does not reach the, the mesocoxy. This is an a D sign, and uh, obviously our bug, if you look at our bug, you can see that obviously there's not any structure resembling that. It's uh, uh, the metasternum is back here. It's not produced onto the mesosternum. Uh, it's fairly, fairly flat. And, uh, and so not, not in the D sign. Okay, that takes us to couplet number three. And here we go with the trichobothria again. Again, difficult to see. Um, but here they are. There's one here and one here lying behind the spiracle. And the choices are trichobothrium nearest spiracle on sternite seven. That would be the last sternite. Uh, laterad of imaginary line tangential to spiracular openings on sternites six and seven by distance at least equal to greatest diameter spiracular opening. Uh, and you can see if you draw a line from this spiracle to that one, you can see that the, the, this uh, trichobothrium is not out, outside that band. It's pretty much in that band, and so it's not laterate or, or, or closer to the lateral margin. Uh, and certainly not by distance uh, equal to greatest diameter of the, of the sp spherical. Uh, so the other choice is at least one of them in or near that imaginary band and projected caudad of spherical on sternite 7. That takes us to couplet number 5. 
Okay, couplet number five. Labium arising on or behind, <coughs> behind imaginary line traversing the head at anterior limit of eyes and or superior surface of third tarsal segment of hind legs shallowly excavated. Uh, I don't have any of these disc discocephalines handy, so we won't look at the, this alternative. Uh, the other is labium arising before such a line and superior surface of tarsal segments convex or flattened. <coughs> the the uh, labium in this bug arises right up in here. And you can see here's the, the anterior limit of the eye. So clearly it, it starts a lot sooner than, than that anterior limit of the eyes. And here you can see that last tarsal segment uh, is not uh, concave or, or flattened. It's, it's fairly convex. So we do not have a discocephaline. We go down to couplet number six. Okay, couplet number six, trichobothria single, Brina short, less than one-third length of scutellum, scutellum reaching apex of abdomen. Uh, the trichobothria are really a very key. Uh, and you can see here, here's the spiracle, and you've got only one trichobothria behind each of these spiracles. So the trichobothria are single and not paired. That would be a podopid. The other character with podopids is that the scutellum is quite large uh, and sometimes could be confused with a scutellarid, uh, but scutellarids all, always have paired trichobothria, so that trichobothria is a character. If you have any doubt, look at the trichobothria and, and, and you'll be able to separate these. Um, and then also you can see that the frena, the frena is a, a portion of the scutellum um, and it's very short on this bug. Uh, that frenum is a, is a structure that the wing kind of fits into. It's a locking mechanism. And generally, this suture here, clavel suture, uh, ends, is, marks the end of the frenum. So uh, you can see it's very short here. And we've already looked at the trichobothria on this bug, so you know that they're, they're paired. And just for comparison, um, Here's the, the clavel suture on our bug, and it comes way down here, so that the frenum is, is all along here, so the frenum is quite a bit larger. So what we have is a pentatomine. Okay, so now in the same, same paper, we go to the key to tribes of pentatomine, and uh, that's on page 202. Now, the tribes have been, uh, since, since this paper, uh, there have been a lot more tribes uh, in our, our higher classification in terms of the tribal uh, affiliation has changed quite a bit. But if you're going to use Ralston's keys, you can just, you'll just use these tribes, realizing that uh, the Pinatomini are actually a lot of other tribes are included in this now. Uh, the Schiacarini, Hyliini, and Mesidiini are all still valid tribes and pretty much as he has them classified. But Pentatomini have been broken up into a lot of other, other tribes. The first character is abdominal venter with a, a longitudinal band of striations on each side extending across basal three or more segments. And uh, you have to kind of adjust the focus a little bit to see this, but uh, I think you can probably all see these striations here. And this is typical of the tribe Mesidiini. And if you look at the first three abdominal segments on our bug, uh, you'll see that there, there are no striations. It's just a normal uh, cuticle, as in most of, the, of the, the group. OK, so we're now at couplet number two, membrane of hemolytra bearing arborescent dark markings and uh, mar jugal margins uh, toothed preapically. And here you can see the dark arborescent markings. These are, uh, in the New World's only Brachamina. Yeah, they're in the tribe Halliaini. And, uh, and we have a single genus Brachamina. Well, actually, now there are two, Parabrachamina and Brachamina. But they'll have these arborescent markings. And also on the head, there's usually a preapical tooth, like you see here. Typical of, of brachymena and parabrachymena, and not found in, in the other groups. So we don't have a halion. Our bug doesn't have either of these. Uh, 
you can see the membrane is clear on our bug and there's no preapical tooth on the uh, on the jugal margin up here it's just rounded okay the last couplet in the key to tribes of pentatomini are the uh, lateral margins of this key couplet three lateral margins of pronotum explanate and second antennal segment at least 1.5 times the length of the third are lateral margins of pronotum rounded or carinate and if sublaminate, second antennal segment less than 1.5 times length of the third. Well, it's pretty clear that the second antennal segment here is uh, is more than uh, one point, or is less than 1.5 times length of the third. It's actually a, a little shorter, and the the uh, pronotal margins are not explanate. They're they're pretty much rounded with a, a, a fine carina. So what we have is the tribe Pentathomini. Ralston and McDonald in uh, 1980 came up with a, a key to sections of the pentatomini as, as they understood it. And uh, in order to uh, key this bug to, to genus, we've got to figure out which section of pentatomini it's in. So you go to the 1980 paper by Ralston and all, and the key to sections of pentatomini. Now these sections are different tri different tribes now, and uh, and they're even uh, within each section. There's there's more than one tribe usually. But the first couplet here asks whether the abdominal venter is bear bears a median tubercle or spine at the base, or whether the base of the abdominal venter is smooth and and not produced. Okay, so if you'll look at the base of the abdomen, the second uh, or the third. This is actually the third abdominal sternite. You can see on this bug there is a, a spine or a tubercle. It's not very large, but it's clearly not, that segment's clearly not just smooth across here. There is a projection. So that takes you to uh, uh, the second couplet here. And then the second part of this, that in that couplet, it asks you whether the metasternum projects ventrad between the, at least between metacoxy with the posterior margin in, in apposition to that median tubercle. So is there some sort of a structure produced that, uh, that this tubercle kind of fits into? And uh, the other option is, is just that the spine is kind of free and there's nothing produced that the, the spine fits into. And if you look at this bug, there really isn't anything here that the spine is, is fitting into. It's uh, it's pretty much free. So what we have is section two. And section two, the key to genera, is in the third paper by Ralston and McDonald, uh, 1981. And so we'll go through that key next. Okay, the first couplet in the key to genera of Pentatomini, section two, on page uh, 257 of the 1981 Ralston and McDonald paper. Uh, first couplet, stout pair of preapical spines present on inferior surface of posterior femora. And the other choice is femora not so armed. And, and here you can see the posterior femur, and there's no, no spines on that femur. So it's not armed like that. Okay, we go to couplet number two. And again, we're looking at this median spine at the base of the abdominal venter and ask whether it's projecting cephalad or, or forward to the procoxy or whether it's not projecting as far cephalad as, as the procoxy, sometimes reduced to a tubercle. And in this case, it's reduced to a tubercle and clearly doesn't extend up to the procoxy. So that takes us to couplet number three. Okay, couplet number three, distal end of first antennal segment clearly exceeding apex of head, distal end versus distal end of first antennal segment not surpassing apex of head. And you can see here it's clearly not surpassing the apex of the head. So that takes us to couplet number five. The next couplet asks whether the buculi are lobed posteriorly from lateral view or evanescent. And evanescent just means they kind of peter out, and you can see here that's pretty much what happens. There's no lobe at the posterior. 
Puncture in. So that takes us to couplet number 12. Couplet number 12 asks whether the osteolar sulcus is short, length about twice diameter of orifice, or whether it's reaching about halfway from, from inner margin of osteol to lateral margin of metapleuron. So here is the osteol here, and you can see there's just this uh, kind of a short auriculate or ear-like lobe attached, and it's probably about twice the length of the, of the width of the osteol. So, <clears throat> so what we have is osteolar sulcus short, and uh, we go to couplet number 18. Okay, couplet 18, abdominal spine surpassing anterior limit of, of uh, metacoxy and each spiracle in a yellow cal on a yellow callus or abdominal tumercle reaching only a posterior limit of metacoxy and spiracles unaccompanied by callus. And again, this is the spine. We've looked at it, and you can tell it's not going to reach the... Uh, uh, anterior limit of metacoxy, and you don't see any yellow calluses on the on the abdomen. So, this is Nazara virigula. All right, with Nazara virigula, and again, this was the most intercepted pentatomoid. So, you're going to probably be seeing a lot of these. Uh, but there are several color varieties. There are names to some of them, but they don't have any taxonomic validity really. Uh, this is the most common form. It's all green, pretty much all green. Uh, and this is what you see most of the time. There is an orange variety. This is not a faded specimen. This is what they look like naturally. It's a mutation of some sort. Uh, and it shows up periodically in field collected animals. Uh, there have been people who have reared this thing. This is a variety that's uh, kind of orange in color, but it's got, you can see some darker green splotches on it. And uh, just a just a color variation, and this one is not probably not as common as some of the others. And then finally, you have a variety that's mostly green, but has some orange patterning on the anterior part of the head and, and pronotum, and is actually kind of an attractive bug. Uh, and again, this is not discoloration; this is natural coloring. <coughs> 